Rub up your engines! Today I'm going to show you five reasons that your brake pedal can sink when you step on it. Now a sinking brake pedal is a scary thing. You step on your brakes and the pedal starts sinking. It's a very common problem. And there's five separate reasons for it. I'm going to explain them all right now. Now the first reason that your brake pedal can sink is because you have an external leak. It's leaking fluid that you'll be able to see somewhere. So if your car's low like mine, you jack it up in the air. Hey, you got a truck or a tall SUV, you can just crawl under there without jacking it up. But this is low, so we got to jack it up. Then get a nice strong flashlight so you can see. It even blanked out the camera, but you want a strong one so you don't miss anything. Then with your flashlight on, Look inside at the wheels. You can see there, it's all bone dry. Same thing there where the brakes are. It's all bone dry. There's no fluid leaking down. And of course, do the same thing for the back brakes. Check inside there too. Now, if you really want to do a good job, you pull all the wheels off, of course, and inspect them closely with the flashlight to see if they're starting to seep or if there's any fluid leaking. You look at the brakes themselves, and especially the rubber hoses that feed them. If you have an old car, those rubber hoses can seep too. Common leaks are the brake calipers leaking. You can buy remanufactured ones. If you got an old car like this with drum brakes on the back. The wheel cylinders are leaking. It'll be leaking inside there. You replace the wheel cylinders. And like I said, the hoses themselves can be leaking. These are all external leaks that you'll be able to see. You see wet fluid and then you put your finger on it, it's all slimy like brake fluid. You know, you got to fix that leak first. And that's what's making it sink because you're losing pressure. Now the next thing to check for is a brake fluid leak that's not external but internal. The system is leaking and you're losing fluid. You check the brake master cylinder here. You'll find it's getting low on fluid. Sometimes the brake light will come on. But try as you may, you can't see any leaks. Where you're losing fluid, you can't see any leaks. The master cylinder would be leaking. I say, Scotty, if it's leaking, how come I can't see it? Well, that's because the master cylinder bolts on to the brake booster. And if it leaks, it can leak on the back seal of the master cylinder, and then the fluid will drip inside the booster which is a sealed unit. Now on this matrix you can easily see it. There's a master cylinder, it bolts to the brake booster, which is this big round black thing. It will leak inside here. This is a sealed unit. You won't see the fluid. The only way you can see the fluid is when you pull the master cylinder off and bolt it out, you'll see that the brake booster here will have fluid inside it. There's not supposed to be anything inside the brake booster except air. You start your car, you get vacuum pressure, the vacuum hose goes to the booster, and it gives you boost. And it's all just a bunch of air, and when it's sucked out, it gives the extra pressure to boost your brakes. So if your pedal's sinking, and you're losing brake fluid, but you can't see it leaking anywhere, pull off the brake master. Odds are you'll find the back of the brake master is all leaking, and the booster has fluid in it. Now since the booster is only made to have suction, that rubber diaphragm can be ruined if it's full of brake fluid. So if it recently happened, you take off the brake master, and you see it's leaking inside, get any kind of suction device, suck all that fluid out of there. You can spray some spray brake cleaner in there and then suck all that out and put a new master on. Now some guys that are worried, especially on an older car, if it did leak in there, they'll replace both the master and the booster together as a unit. So they don't have to worry about it being somewhat rotten in the booster and later it goes out. That's a safer way to fix that. Now the next way your brake pedal can sink, internal leaks that don't leak out. They don't leak out anywhere. And you might think, how can you have a leak if it doesn't leak anywhere? Well, the brake master cylinder is kind of like your heart. Pumps fluid out when you step on the brake pedal to the wheels. But if it gets an internal leak, so when you step on it, instead of the fluid going from the master cylinder to the wheels, it just leaks inside itself and it's not leaking out anywhere, but the pressure instead of going to the wheels just either stays inside the master cylinder or goes back into the reservoir. And that reservoir, hey, when the master cylinder reservoir has fluid being pumped in it, it's not going to leak out anywhere because that's sealed too. So it'll just go up and down when you step on it. If you don't have any external leaks, but you're losing pressure, you see the master cylinder isn't losing fluid, it doesn't get to the low point, that means odds are your master cylinder itself is bad and leaking inside itself. And here's a good way to test it. You're not losing any fluid, but with the car turned off, you step on the brake pedal, 
and it sinks all the way to the floor. That tells you you're losing pressure, but since you don't see any leaks anywhere, odds are it's the master cylinder that's leaking itself. You don't start the car, you just do it with the car turned off. Because sometimes it's a car running, when you step on the brake and it sinks all the way down, that's a sign of a bad booster. You check that a different way. With a bad booster, when you step on the brake, with the car turned off, it might be rock hard. But then when you start the car, and then step on the brake pedal and it sinks all the way to the floor, that shows that the booster has a problem. That it's sinking to the floor with the booster, and in that case, if it was hard with the engine turned off, but soft turned on, you got a bad booster. Now the fourth thing that can make your brake pedal sink are loose parts on your brake system. I've seen it where guys worked on their car and they didn't tighten up either the hub when they were changing wheel bearings or they didn't get the caliper bolts on that hold the brake caliper on right and it gets loose then you're gonna have loose parts and the pedal will sink and if you have a car with drum brakes like this matrix that has discs in the front but drums in the back if the drums are worn or the brake shoes are worn and not adjusted tight it'll sink because there's too much play when you stop on the brakes instead of going a little bit they have to go a lot and that makes the brake pedal sink so you check to make sure they're adjusted right and that they weren't just all worn out and worn parts hey, that's the easiest thing to check you just pull off wheels and see if things are worn out <laughs> and if they're worn out you replace them it gets hard you know well that part was too worn it was called and too much play that's the absolute easiest thing to check aside from just pure leaks where you pull off the wheel and you see the fluids leaking all over the place you know you need to fix that leak now the fifth and last thing that can cause brake pedals to sink is probably the most expensive and hardest one to figure out when you go under the hood and go over here you see all this crazy looking stuff well that's the main actuator for the anti-lock brake system and a problem in your anti-lock brake system can also cause the pedal to sink and that can get expensive. It's all computer run when you slam on your brakes. Anti-lock brakes does exactly what it says. It keeps your brakes from locking up. So if the sensors on one wheel show that it's slipping and the other one isn't, then it's got to actuate valves so that they all stop evenly so the car doesn't pull and slide all over the place. Well, it's all fine and dandy when it actually works, but when they break, the valves inside that modulator can go bad and they can stay open when they're supposed to be open, which makes the pedal go to the floor things that they're supposed to pulsate they might pulsate at the wrong time or not pulsate at all and you can get a dropping pedal now if you get a dropping pedal and your abs light comes on that's telling you there's an abs code done you got to get it scanned with the scanner and see what the problem is if you do have an abs problem and it does sink to the floor generally it has to do with that entire abs actuator module going bad and in the case of this lexus a new one is over 1500 bucks so it's not something you'd even wish on your worst enemy you don't want to have a problem with an abs modulator that's an expensive problem now generally they are hard to diagnose but often when these go bad you will get an external leak you'll see this assembly has fluid leaking out of it and it should be bone dry so if you see fluid leaking out of it, you know, ugh, the modular is starting to go bad. Now occasionally in the past I got customers where the pedal doesn't sink, but they're losing fluid. And you look at that ABS module and you see it's starting to get a little bit wet. Well, if the brake pedal doesn't sink, but you're losing some fluid and you see it leaking there and you don't see leaks anywhere else. Hey, truthfully, I've had customers when they find out they don't want to spend 1500 bucks, they buy a can of brake fluid and when it gets a little low and the light comes on, they pour some back in and they drive them years that way sometimes. If it's just a tiny little external leak of a gasket or something seeping, hey, a lot of guys will just live with that and add fluid. As long as the pedal's not sinking. Now, if it starts sinking, yes. Time to replace it or get another car if it's that expensive. So now, you know, the five reasons that your brake pedal can start sinking to the floor and how you can fix such problems or at least keep them under check so they don't cause future problems or make you spend all of your money fixing them and here's some bonus questions and answers william the conquered says scotty help me i got an 05 toyota tacoma v6 it won't start and i know a little bit about cars that has no injector pulse and there's no ground to the fuel pump and the wires and powers or grounds are okay everyone can check help you got no injector pulse on one of those and all the grounds and the power wires are good unfortunately this is a rare occasion but odds are your main computer is gone your pcm the power control module is probably shot that's the only reason i've ever seen them not have an injector pulse 
on that particular vehicle. It is 15 years old. Now it's a rarity that the computers go bad on Toyotas, but uh, when they do exactly that, I worked on a Lexus a couple years ago, did the same thing, and I had to replace the main computer. It just wasn't pulsing the injectors anymore. It's a rarity, but even the Toyota and Lexus products, once in a while, their main computers will go out. And as long as you're sure that you got power and ground going to the computer and the wires are good, odds are your computer's gone out, because they do every once in a while. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.